Hello, hello, hello. It's Michael E. Gerber speaking to you from Carlsbad, California, the land that God created just for you and just for me. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another Awakening the Entrepreneur Within session. Today we have a spectacular guest, a gentleman, David Brownlee, who's done amazing things over his life working with amazing people, creating amazing outcomes, and all of it based upon the absolutely critical idea that it's the system, stupid, it's the system. And the system is absolutely critical if anything is going to work. I'd love to introduce you to David Brownlee. David, welcome to Awakening the Entrepreneur Within. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm so excited to be here. Uh, I, I'm just really uh, uh, happy to be sharing uh, this time with you and your audience and uh, looking forward to adding massive value uh, any way I can. You got it, David. David, please help everybody who's listening to us right now, the thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people who are checking in to awakening the entrepreneur within because they want to awaken the entrepreneur within. Tell everybody why you're here, what you've been doing in your life, and why systems are so critical to you. Absolutely. So I'm the CEO and founder of a company called purecustomerservice.com, where we do training in customer service and customer success from everybody from small businesses to large Fortune 500 companies like LinkedIn and Harley Davidson. And uh, I'm so blessed to be doing what I do when I go back and I think of how everything started. You know, it was reading your book, I got to say, the, the E-Myth, right? And getting this into my head, getting, I, I must have read the book probably three or four times, right? Just getting it in my head and, and how systems work and how you can put together a system and get a predictable outcome every time. So I, I've had a couple different companies in my life, uh, built up uh, an entertainment company, uh, sold the company. Uh, and then started this journey. I, I actually had something happen in my life. Uh, that was absolutely crazy. The, the date was uh, February 15th, 2008. And uh, it's a day Isn't I'm never Remarkable. Just a second, David. Yes. Isn't it remarkable that those extreme um, moments in our lives yes. um, actually can be recalled almost to the minute of the day. Absolutely. When it absolutely happened. Tell us, what was that extreme moment? So the extreme moment was uh, my wife and I were in Nicaragua, uh, in the country of Nicaragua, right by Costa Rica. And we had gone to dinner that night and we decided to take a taxi cab. And it's a longer story, but we, we got into a cab and it turned out that the, the cab driver was in there with a, with a couple of cohorts and their whole intention was to rob us. So they pulled out a gun. They said, the money, the money, the money. And I grabbed the gun so the guy couldn't shoot me. And then his partner proceeded to stab me in the leg, pulled it out, blood going everywhere. And, and all of these things were happening uh, without a weapon. So I'm like, how can I get out of this? And, and, and as funny as it sounds, having a system of so many years of communication and uh, the, the influence and, you know, as crazy as it sounds, customer service, all these things that I've learned that have helped me build businesses actually literally helped me save my life. And that's my mission is to help uh, anybody that is listening. You know, I just wrote a book uh, called Rockstar Service, Rockstar Profits, uh, number one bestseller, very humbled. And that, that book explains not only my story, but 
the different steps that you can implement into your business, the system, so that you guys can get more customers, so that you can have a better culture, so that you can have more uh, joy and fulfillment in your life. And what, what's amazing is those those uh, those David, pieces that David, I put in the book are the I've same got to interrupt you for a moment. David. Yes. You can't leave us hanging like that. Yes. I'm okay. Still back, Good. I'm still back in the freaking taxi. <laughs> and your wife is sitting there and yes. you're doing battle with a guy and then the other guy. What happened? So what ended up happening is I knew I had to calm down the situation. So what ended up happening was I ended up talking to him. And what did they want? Right. They wanted the money. So we ended up going to the bank. We actually ended up getting him money. Maybe it was three hundred dollars or something that they got from our ATM machine. Right. Then uh, they they uh, we, we were talking to him about the things we were doing in Nicaragua, working with uh, the orphanage, working with kids and having an actual conversation and influencing the situation, taking it from somewhere that was heightened down to somewhere that was somewhat calm. Right. And, 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 and as crazy as it sounds, building rapport with these guys. Right. So we were kidnapped for about 45 minutes altogether. So imagine this. They could have taken us to certain parts you were of on a the city. Sales call. I was on a sales call of my life. <laughs> wow. You know, and, and so they could have dropped us off at certain parts of the city and this whole thing would have started all over again or even worse. So luckily, they took us to what's like the Beverly Hills of the city called Managua, which is like the New York city of, of uh, Nicaragua. And they start driving us up this hill. And I started thinking to myself, oh, this is great, you know, because I could see there were nice houses, you know, and, and they were going to drop us off somewhere nice. But then when we got to the top of the hill, I saw a dirt road that went off to my right into the darkness. And I just remember thinking, don't turn down that road. And that's exactly what they did. They turned down the road. They drove down. I saw the lights getting dim. They had us get out of the taxi cab. We got on our knees, closed our eyes, and I was listening for that next sound. And the next sound was that taxi cab driving away. Wow. We had made it through. And, and in this whole time, my wife didn't realize that I was stabbed and had been bleeding. So she was wearing a white dress. And she looked down and it was red, covered with blood. And she started screaming. And so I, I said, don't worry, baby, I'm okay. And I took my shirt off. I tied a, 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 a tourniquet. And you know when you watch those bad zombie movies, like the, the B movies, and, and the credits are rolling and they're walking and, and they had just survived the zombies. It was like that, right? And so we ended up walking uh, down to the end of the road. We found a house. They called the ambulance. Um, we ended up filing a report with um, the, the consulate. And years later... I found out that if you go to Nicaragua now and you get into a taxi cab at night, the taxi cab driver actually has to leave the light on in the taxi cab. That's wow. part of the new law because this was a thing that was going on. Wow. So absolutely astonishing. It's astonishing. astonishing. Yes. But as you speak of it and, and uh, hear me, the, my response, because this is the first time I've heard this story as you speak yes. of it. There was a place within you that knew you had to calm the situation down yes. because it was ratcheting up, ratcheting up, ratcheting up. Yes. Reaction, reaction, reaction. So yes. you had to turn reaction into action. That's right. And that's what you unconsciously, based upon everything you've been learning over these years, learned how to yes. do. It's an amazing, amazing thing. Thank God everything worked out the way it did. Absolutely. And, you know, what, in any kind of military training or things that you do in your business every day, it's a system over and over and over. And pretty soon it becomes subconscious and it just comes out of you. And, and you're absolutely right. And, and making it through that, that's why I do what I do today. In that moment, I decided to dedicate my life to helping others. And that's when I became a coach. Uh, an author and a trainer and a speaker. That's so. an extraordinary thing. <laughs> so let me share with everybody who's listening to us that um, there's a way that people have come to refer to what David's talking about. And they essentially say, you got to turn it into a habit. Now, I want to suggest to you that it's exactly the opposite of turning it, it into a habit. In short, it's exactly the opposite of becoming hypnotized. Hear me. It's exactly the opposite because it's alive. 
It's not a habituated reaction. It's a living action. And it's that which we've learned over the years of the work we've been doing that is absolutely critical to the creating process, the process that obviously David had to walk into in creating the companies that David has created. What is customer service after all? What is it, David, that you've learned how to create a system for that enables your people to rise to the occasion continuously in a way that astonishes the people you work with and you work for? What is that system? Absolutely. So a lot of times in customer service, and maybe some of your audience, uh, you know, if you have taken some customer service training in the past, it's all based around content. What do you say? How do you greet somebody? Uh, what do you do when X, Y, Z happens? And all of that is very important. And what I found is what's more important is that concept that you and I are humans. And there is a human interaction that's happening. There is communication. There's building relationship. You know, one, one of the, uh, the sections I have is how to build a relationship in 60 seconds or less, <laughs> right? Be, be, because a lot of times we don't have time. And, and depending on if you're on the phone or if you're in a retail situation, things change. But you're always building that relationship. And my favorite quote is by Maya Angelou. And she said, people will forget what you say. People will forget what you do. But they'll always remember how you made them feel. And, and, and that's really what sets it apart. You know, the, the concept of rockstar service, rockstar profits is imagine this for a second. Imagine your favorite rock star or, or celebrity, somebody, right? Get them in your head. Now, what would you do if they walked into your business today and asked for your service? Or what would you do if they called you on the phone? How would you treat them? What would you say to them once you picked your job off the ground from drooling, right? How would you treat that person? Now, ask yourself this question. When was the last time you treated a customer that way? Ooh, wow. So now you start getting the idea that, hey, your customers, that's more exciting to me. Your customers are the people who trust in you to help solve their problem. So you need to treat them with the utmost, um, with, with the utmost care right? To care about them as people. What is it that they're so, going so David, So yeah. David, let me just interject in a point and a question. Sure. Um, because what you're saying obviously makes sense to everybody. Yes. Um, obviously, they're people. Obviously, I'm people. Obviously, you're people. Um, yes. Obviously, uh, it's, it, it's true. On the other hand, what's obviously not true is that we don't know how to do that. In short, most people don't know how to do what you're describing somebody has to do in, yes. you're saying, 50 seconds. <laughs> That's so right. Take, so let's take that 50 second thing you just said. Yes. And actually go through it. Let's that do it. Second thing. Let's do it. I, I have a water bottle that I keep on my desk. I don't know if you guys can see this. It's I can see it. S -E -C. S -E -C. Th th this will be my uh, whiteboard for now, right? My white water okay, bottle. Okay, you got it. Okay, so, so SEC, and it only takes a sec to do. Okay, so here's the first thing. The first thing is smile, is smile. Right. And it sounds so basic. Look, your smiles are contagious. But what if right? I don't what if I don't feel like smiling? Smile anyway. And this <laughs> is what's great. They, they've done studies when you smile and you don't feel like smiling. It sends actual messages to your brain that says, I'm happy. You're like, well, I'm not really happy. <laughs> right. And it messes with your brain and you'll actually start to feel better. Okay. okay? But so wait, 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 yes. David, I'm going to be, I'm going to be the, your most difficult customer. Come on. You be my difficult customer. <laughs> so hear me. I, I can see all my people in my office eight hours a day. Yes. Smiling, 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 smiling. Smile and you understand. I can see absolutely. That. I can see the pain behind that. <laughs> I mean, I can see the the the, the gritting of the teeth behind yes. that smile because he don't 
feel like smiling and he doesn't want to remember that he needs to feel like smiling every moment of every freaking day. How do you break through that? Yeah, great question. There, there's a lot of different ways. I'll give you a couple different ways. Number one is they've done studies on- Give me music. one way. Just give me one no, way. I'm going to give you one way. Okay. This, is, this is the best way to do it. Okay. Music. Have you ever been driving in your car and, and, and your favorite song comes out and you just start smiling and moving? You don't even have to think about it, right? It just feels good. It goes straight to your right. nervous system. So put on some music, especially if you get off a call with a difficult customer. Right. Or somebody leaves your, you know, that you just had a confrontation with. They were upset. Put on some music. Take so a wait, a second, wait a second. I mean, we, we can't just be stupidly simple here. You, you yep. say put on a music. So now I got 50 people in the office and they're all putting on their music. <laughs> yes. I mean, so, so, so that, what I suggest, what I suggest is do it before your shift. Right. Because every, we always hear in customer service, have a positive attitude. Have a positive well, what if I don't want to have a positive attitude? There's things going on at home. I mean, Michael Gerber's coming down at me in the office. I got pressure. I got timelines. I don't have a time, right? So, so do it before you get there so you come in with the right attitude. Now, it's like a piece of paper. Every time something goes wrong, something's ripped off a little bit of paper. And by the end of the day, you got a little nugget left of paper. So here's what I suggest is do a reset, Hopefully. okay? Hopefully, hopefully you got a little bit left, right? By the end of the day, so so most often at the end of the day, there ain't no paper around. (laughs) We've torn it to shreds. That's right. That's right. So, so do a reset. So, for example, every hour when I'm in my office, I get up, I go outside, I walk, I breathe, I listen to some music, right? Or a positive training, right? Get it, get into radical you and get something that's going to, you know, uh, uh, feed your brain and make you feel good. And it happens instantly. This is what's great about it. It doesn't take some long drawn out thing where 50 people are trying to smile all day. Right. So when you interact with somebody, be conscious that the first thing you do is smile because why, why is that so important when you smile and you interact with somebody, that lets them know that, hey, you're ready for this transaction, whatever that transaction is. Okay, I got that. Okay, got so that's it. the first step. So the first yes. step is before you engage with another person, you smile. That's right. Especially so at work. You start, the, you start the engagement with a smile on your face. That's right. And by the way, this What's works at home thing? too. The second thing is we live in this society of look at me right? We're, we're in that selfie um, society right now. So we all want to feel special. And, that, and by the way, I get it. It's a human need. We want to feel special. So when you're having a conversation with somebody, you greet them with a smile and you make eye contact. Now, you don't want to be just staring at them like this because that's creepy, you know, but you want to make eye contact and focus on that person. Well, okay. David, look, I'm on the phone all day. That's okay. Just focus on that person. You're not making eye contact, but you're focused. You're actively listening to what that person is saying. What does that do? That tells that other person that, hey, I matter. Look, you matter to me. You, you're coming to us, to our, to our business, for our product, our service. You're important, and I'm going to make sure that you feel that way. Okay? So that's the E is eye contact or um, focus or attention if you're on Got the phone. What's third the thing. third thing? Third thing is comment or compliment. Right. A lot of times when somebody gets on the phone, especially if there's uh, a line of people out the door or there's lots of people on hold. Right. You want to get them on and off, on and off. Well, that's great with some people. Some people just want to get on and get off. Some people want to actually have that interaction with you. So it might sound something like this. Hey, you know, while you're pulling up their information, how's the weather out there in Carlsbad? Okay, so we're two wait, degrees wait, in summer. Wait, 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 Dave. Yeah. We're, we're way beyond 50 seconds. So let's get this nailed down. So this is a process that you can use in 50 seconds to produce a profoundly positive result with somebody Absolutely. you're speaking to. Absolutely. So, that, so it just, happens this fast. It name the benchmarks. Fast. Name the benchmarks. Smile, eye contact, comment, or compliment, right? So I was in Chipotle. And I'm going through, you know, and if you don't, not familiar with Chipotle, it's a Mexican food restaurant, kind of like a cafeteria. You get to walk down through the line, right? And there was a lady behind me and there was a lady behind the, the counter and she was making my burrito or whatever. She looked at the lady next to me and she looked at her face. You know what she said? She said, 
gosh, I really like that shade of lipstick you're wearing. And the lady next to me, you could totally hear what she said. The lady next to me goes, excuse me, what did you say? And she looked at her and she said, I really like that shade of lipstick you're wearing. And I looked at the lady behind me and she started blushing and she got a little <laughs> smile on her face. And by the way, how long did it take to make that compliment? That's right? true. It, it's very quick. So, so when I say building a relationship, it might just be that smile, eye contact, comment, compliment, that person's gone. I love it. So now here. Yeah. Let's stop for a moment, because what's truly important in our conversation is that everybody who's listening to us understands it's the system, stupid. And the system yes. is absolutely critical, because if yes. David walks into a relationship where he is going to influence the outcome of their engagement with a client who's looking for a company that can actually transform their client service um, role, their client service impact, they're going to have to truly believe that's possible. So David yes. is dis defining and describing a way in which if David were making that call, the things yes. that David would do, first, second, third, fourth, Absolutely. fifth, sixth, etc., and so forth, reaching toward the outcome. Yes. So think about it in this way. And, and while what David is talking about um, isn't what I'm about to call it, but years upon years upon years ago, when I started out this strange career of mine, I met with a small business owner that I was introduced to, and the gentleman who asked me to meet with this guy owned a small ad agency. And the guy who asked me to meet with this guy happened to be my brother-in-law. And I was staying over to visit my sister and my brother-in-law on our way to the rest of our life in Mendocino, California. And my brother-in-law said, Michael, do me a favor, would you please? I want you to meet a client of mine. It's a small, high-tech startup. And the problem is he can't convert the leads we're creating for him into sales. And I said to my brother-in-law, whose name was and is still Ace, I said, Ace, I don't know anything about business. And I don't know anything about high-tech. How the hell can I help? He said, you know more than you think you do. Just meet with the guy. Let's see what happens. So I've written about this story, but I'm telling it right now because it actually fits what we're engaged in here with David. I sit down with the guy behind his desk. My brother-in-law says, listen, I'm going to take off for an hour, get to know each other, and he takes off. And the guy asked me, so Michael, what do you know about my business? And I said, nothing, Bob. He looks a little strange. And he said, well, if you don't know anything about my business, what do you know about my product? And I said, less than that, Bob. And Bob looks at me, he said, well, Michael, if you don't know anything about my business and you don't know anything about my product, how can you help me? And I said, I haven't a clue, Bob, but we got an hour to kill until Ace comes back to pick me up. So let's find out. So I started that conversation with a question. The question really was, let's find out. Now understand my assumption was at the very beginning of that meeting that I didn't know anything about business because I didn't. And I didn't know anything about high tech because I didn't. So then what? I began to ask Bob questions. Now understand, because I was interested to find out why Ace brought me there. You understand? He knew I didn't know anything about business. He knew I didn't know anything about high tech. So what in the world did Ace know that neither Bob nor I knew? And as I began to ask Bob questions, it became absolutely evident. It was evident that Bob didn't know what I thought he knew either. 
Bob didn't know how to run a small business. And I suddenly came to the realization that I knew something. And I knew that selling is a system. And because I knew that selling is a system, I then said to Bob, your problem is obvious, Bob. You've hired sales engineers because first of all, they're experienced at sales. And second of all, they understand your product. And you made the assumption then that obviously they could sell the product you've got, but they couldn't because you don't have a selling system. And Bob looked at me strangely and said, well, what's a selling system? He said, well, Bob, it's a process. Step one, step two, step three, step four, et cetera, and so forth. And when you design that process, you can teach a kid to use it. And he doesn't have to know anything when he starts. And the reason I'm telling you that is because that's how my entire career, being the author, author of 30 E-Myth books, being the gentleman who's become the world's number one small business guru, according to Inc. Magazine, being the guy who's worked with over 100,000 small business clients, designing the only system of its kind. Understand, it started in that office with that guy, without me, yeah knowing anything about what was about to happen. And what you just described, David, is so resonant to what I'm describing here. So obviously you've created a system to deliver to small businesses, Fortune 500 companies, any company, any product, any people under the sun based upon an understanding that the system is the freaking solution. That's right. So tell us one really powerful story about one of your clients who actually used what you just started to teach us to do and what happened. Yes. So excellent. That, that it really does tie into this. So last year I had a, a, a big company, large company, motorcycle company, and they were opening up a new uh, call center, right, in Vegas. So what I did was the, the, the system that works for me and best with my clients is I go there and do a live training. Why? So I get that energy up, right? We gain the buy-in. It's, it's facilitating, and I'm asking questions, right? What is your biggest challenge? What is it that's getting you guys stuck? What are your goals? What are the, the core values and mission of what we're doing together? We put all that together. Then we did uh, monthly coaching calls. And then I've got an online program where they can you know, be at the gym in their phone listening to, my, to me talk, right? And so we're ingraining that system to where, hey, when they're on a phone with a difficult customer, right? Boom, they go through a system. Let them vent, reassure the customer, all these different things that we're teaching them. And at the end of the year, this last year, we just got the numbers. They were up 29%. We, wow. and we, which is great year over year, right? But our goal was 30%, we missed it by 1%. But still, that growth of 29% year over year by implementing the system, anybody can do the system. We just take that and put it into your business. But let me share with everybody who's listening the added in ingredient to that. Because what you brought to them, David, is new energy. Yes. Take this to the bank, David. What you brought to that client is new energy. And what I mean by new energy, it's a new experience of who they are and what they do beyond the old experience they have of it. That's right. So understand, right. new energy is the great name for your company. <laughs> <laughs> it's called new energy, stupid. What's that? That's right. I feel it in a minute. 
<laughs> you know, and it's funny because I have a lot of leaders that come to me and say, you know what? I've been trying to tell them the same thing, but coming from you, it's different, right? You ever have that conversation with your wife over and over and over? You and got then somebody else tells them and they go, oh, <laughs> guess what I just learned? Oh, the same thing I've been telling you for 10 years? <laughs> you, you, got it. you see how extraordinary it is, everybody. Yeah. Understand, how do you awaken the entrepreneur within? You have to understand most specifically that when I say the entrepreneur, I mean the creator. And understand, if we're born in the image of God, as we're told, then we're born to create. And if we're born to create, we're born to create a world fit for God. But nobody ever taught us how to do that. Nobody even understood why that's so critical to do that. So as David is sharing his stories with us, I'm experiencing the awakening of the creator within me completely enveloped in the circumstances and situations that David is enveloped in and involved in and immersed in every single day. But right. David didn't call it what it is. I called it what it is simply because I was open to what it is could be. And the process of thinking that way, feeling that way, discovering it that way, the words new energy came to me. I love it. Somebody accused me of being a great author. I'm not. I'm simply open to the author within me. And the author within me is the same one who learned how to play the saxophone. It's the same one who learned how to change a bad habit that has taken over the course of my life. It's the same one who decided to quit drinking booze. And I did. And the same one who says this to me and that to me, it's that creator within every single one of you. Hear me, every single one of you, and you're a stranger to him. You're a stranger to her. David isn't. But you understand as well that David needs to be inspired in a new way than David has been inspired in the past. Every extraordinary creator on the planet is simply waiting as Steve Jobs did for what's next. And what's next is the inspiration, the education, the application, the implementation, the continuous improvement of who you are and what you do again and again and again and again. And if you don't do that, if you don't make yourself available to that, if you don't understand the profound meaning of that, hear me, you'll pursue a deadening path that will take you away from who you really are. We created Radical You for the very purpose that I've just described here. We created Radical You to make it possible for every human being on the planet to awaken the entrepreneur within them and to discover the process that's absolutely critical for that to happen. We call that process the eightfold path. Step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, step six, step seven, step eight. The first is a dream. David has to know and discover the dream within him. When I created my very first company, I had a dream. My dream was explicit, explicitly shared with my partner, Tom. And I said, we're here to do this. We're here to transform the state of small business worldwide. That was our dream. We had a vision. Our vision was to invent the McDonald's 
of small business consulting. Now, when I tell you that, it's hard for you to understand what do I mean by that. But understand, that's not the purpose of our talking right now. I have a dream. I have a vision. I have a purpose. Our purpose way back then in 1977 was that every single small business owner called to what we were here to do could immediately get it and apply it and in the process become as successful as a McDonald's franchisee. Now that might seem like a limiting dream, but hear me. A McDonald's franchisee is more productive than 99% of all small companies on the planet. Why? Because it's the system, stupid. And the system is the heart of the brand, stupid. And the brand is at the heart of Ray Kroc's deeply embedded enthusiasm, stupid. That new meaning, that new vision, that new insight, that new inspiration, that new energy. McDonald's brought new energy to the world of restaurants worldwide. Nobody had seen anything like it before McDonald's. And that's because Ray Kroc had a dream, had a vision, had a purpose, and a mission. Our mission in 1977 was to invent the only business development system of its kind. The system that once we created it would make it possible for us to realize our dream, our vision, and our purpose. Hear that. Those are the first four steps of the eightfold path. When we come back next time, I'm going to share the next four steps with each and every one of you. For now, I just want to say, David, thank you. I just loved your energy, love your stories, and love what you do. Thanks for joining us. Please say goodbye to everybody who's joined us here. Hey, thanks for having me. And uh, if you guys want to get some free training and learn more about what I do, go to rockstarcustomerservice.com and uh, we'll take care of you. Super. And everybody, go to RadicalU.com and join us to awaken the entrepreneur within you to completely transform the state of your life, the state of your business, and the state of your world. This is Michael E. Gerber saying, thanks for joining us and awakening the entrepreneur within. I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.